Luigi's Mansion is a game that's very close to my heart. Released as a launch title for the Nintendo GameCube in September of 2001, it was an unorthodox action-adventure game starring one of Nintendo's most popular supporting characters, Luigi. It also happened to be one of the first games I ever beat on the Nintendo GameCube, and one of my all-time favorite games in general. It made me wonder, has my nostalgia clouded my vision at all? I mean, how does this game hold up now? To find out, I had to play this game again. This time, goggles off. Luigi's Mansion begins with our hero embarking towards a mansion he won in a contest he didn't enter. Upon making his way up the foyer, he finds himself attacked by ghosts, only to be saved by Tiny Professor and vague Super Mario Sunshine tie-in, Egad, who's in with the goods to help Luigi out. Over the course of the adventure, Luigi learns that Mario has been captured, having been thrust inside a painting by King Boo. This is all using technology that Egad himself had made in his quest to make, well, really kind of messed up art if you think about it. The story overall is pretty silly, but it takes it all in stride. It's a very Miyamoto-esque approach to storytelling, using plot elements only as a vessel for what at its core is a gameplay-centric experience. Sometimes this can be a detriment to Nintendo games, but in Luigi's Mansion it fits like a glove. Shortly after being rescued, Luigi is presented with the Poltergust 3000, a machine invented by Egad to vacuum up ghosts for later portrification. This is what leads us into the real meat of the gameplay. Sucking and- No, 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 I am not doing that one. No. Basically, the gist of it is this. You blast them with the flashlight when they're close, and then you bring them in by vacuuming them. When their HP hits zero, you bag them and move on. There's a lot of variations to this that shake up the gameplay, such as shooting fire, water, or ice to expose their weak points before sucking them up, removing masks from shy guys before hitting them with the flashlight, not getting grabbed, not slipping on banana peels, area of effect attacks to keep you at bay, Jesus Christ. and these guys who just sort of drop from the ceiling and laugh like morons. There's also a number of other enemies that all have their own special approach, and none of them feel out of place. Even the portrait ghosts all feel fresh, though I do have some qualms with the way that these larger enemies are handled. Almost all of them seem to fall under one of three categories. Shoot the target, you found my weakness, and the grab bag special. The third of these I am a huge fan of. I throw Melody, the twins, Jarvis, Madame Clairvoya, and Vincent Van Gogh all into that category. These characters are where the game shines, whether it's a whack-a-mole minigame or video game music trivia. It's unorthodox, and it highlights character traits in a way that makes the characters feel endearing, even if the moments themselves are pretty short. Madame Clairvoya is sort of a giveaway once you find all of Mario's items, but she becomes the voice of the main plot summary. Not to mention Luigi blowing up the friggin' moon, which is still one of my favorite moments in the entire game, don't anyone ever tell me otherwise! And then there's the more neutral less exciting enemies. We'll start with the shoot the targets as it highlights one of the biggest qualms I have with this game. There are so many projectile based fights. Chauncey, the baby, shoot him with the ball. Bogmire, Slim, Nana, shoot him with the ball. Even the game's final boss, King Boo inside a giant Bowser or whatever. You wait for him to spit his fire, throw his bombs, and then when he bends over, you knock his head off with the ball. It's one of those things I never noticed when I was playing this game before, but it's such blatant recycling. The only difference is Nana's moving around in her chair, Slim's walking around the table, and the balls are really small. I mean, these are all the same premise, and they're just reused in different ways, which in some cases makes sense, but in this case, it just seems a little stale. And then there's you found my weakness, which is basically just what I'd call Lydia, Miss Petunia, Sir Weston, Uncle Grimly. I mean, you literally just have to do the one thing that bothers them. Heck, Uncle Grimly just stands there. He doesn't even do anything. And that brings me back to my next gripe, which is that 
while I love this game to death, there are a few moments that, while I understand and respect their reasons for doing them, I just really wish they didn't do. The power outage, for example, is meant to get the player's focus from the upstairs to the basement and show them the final boss room, but did they really need to make me backtrack through the entire house, constantly being stopped by noxious waves of never-ending ghosts? The moments leading up to the power outage, by the way, are incredible. Save for the one stray boo at the end of the fight, Bulasis is by far the best thing about this game. Leading him towards the unicorn horn and popping him into a swarm of smaller ghosts was an inventive way of teaching me how to deal with enemies in groups, which in hindsight kind of preps you for the painful race to a mirror that's about to follow. These main issues I pointed out aren't the only thing that plagued this game. We also have a couple other things that, while small, really make a difference. I'll cover these quick, but first off, if you do not stand immediately in front of a chest, it will not open. I did this at least 50 times in my playthrough and it is rough. Second, Luigi gets scared all the time, and the hallways are chock full of nuisances when the lights are off. That means that every time one of those purple guys drops from the ceiling to chuckle, that's one to three seconds that Luigi spends hopping around yelling. Additionally, there are a lot of ways to get hurt in small increments for little to no reason. Getting dragged along the ground? Two to five health. Touch a mouse or a bat? Five points. Open a fake door? That's... <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. And then there's boo behavior. Yes, I said it. Boo behave- the boos, their- their behavior. Boos are fun to catch, but there are moments where the AI decides to just make your life an absolute living nightmare. You see, Boomerang? You see this guy? He likes to go from the telephone room to the clockwork room, and then from the clockwork room out to the hallway and then back into the clockwork room. He has no sense of decency making me walk through two double wide rooms just to get 10 health from him, and absolutely no remorse in having 300 health total. Shame on you. Shame! Not to mention, they can go into hidden rooms too if they're especially ornery, and that does not seem like a troublesome ghost to me. That just seems rude. Now these are all pretty small quality of life issues, but they add up. I spent at least a good 5 to 10 minutes of my playtime just waiting for Luigi to calm down. I think there are a lot of things like that that could have been streamlined and made more fun overall. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, Wow Josh, I can't believe you just crapped all over this game you said you loved. You must really hate it. And actually, no. The issues I have with this game are more than made up for by the things that made this game great. So with that said, here are the good things. First of all, let's talk about aesthetic and heart. I was absolutely captivated by the rich and vibrant characters, the way the mansion is composed of so many interesting rooms, the way that the color palette uses blues, greens, neons, and an otherwise rustic but still warm environment. For still rather limited GameCube era visuals, this title does best what Nintendo is known for. Aesthetic strength and cartoonish simplicity, both shaped in a way that ages well and complements the hardware it's presented on. Watching Van Gore's artistic legacy unravel, following Shivers back to the butler's room and watching him sit on his candle, having Mr. Bones yell at you for coaxing the noisy dog, they all bring a sense of wonder and vision and made me love every single ghost I captured. Even the more repetitive gameplay elements are represented with characters that felt genuine enough that it took looking back objectively to realize I had played the same ghost over and over. Nana and Slim are probably the two most similar portrait ghosts in the game, shooting balls at moving targets and all, but even they have enough differences to be recognizable. Ultimately, I completed this game in about five hours, though I've previously even beaten it under four. The game is rather short, which always left me wanting more. That said, all the different concepts toyed with in this game are packed together concisely with player experience in mind. Each section of the mansion is split into four areas, minus the tutorial zone, all delineated by card suits to guide the player through. And the controls are really solid. The act of pressing in the opposite direction, combined with the controller rumble and the immersive visual style, create the illusion of actually being dragged along. Even now, I don't know if I've felt controls so tactile and responsive. Unless you're trying to pick something up in the air, which is just terrible and I hate it and it's awful. So, is this game still as good as I remember? Not quite, but I still had a blast. I mean, Luigi's Mansion is not without its frustrating flaws, but it still did what it set out to do. I mean, it showed what the GameCube could be, and it gave players a stroll through a vivid world where Nintendo's biggest scaredy cat could finally come into his own. Year of Luigi forever. 8 out of 10. I mean, if you care about numbers, which I don't really, so 
We can just throw this number out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or had something that particularly resonated with you during it, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll also be taking suggestions on what games to play, though I do have a few in mind, so feel free to leave those in the comment section as well. Uh, check out this cool video over here. And don't worry because my Luigi's Mansion copy is okay. I did drop it on the ground, but it looks like it is fine. Don't worry about it. We're good. See you next time. I need to stop dropping these on the floor.